Hi, had a few requests to show uh, some more information about displays for the power supply project. And as it happens, I've also had uh, some extra displays sent to me by a company called IC Station. They uh, advertise on eBay and also have their own storefront. I'll provide the links uh, in the blog, both on my own website and on Element 14, in case you're interested. And uh, what they sent me is a couple of three-digit uh, panel mount meters. They're effectively an all-in-one little unit for the voltage and for the current. And I have um, one current meter in a three-digit uh, three display, which will go from zero to 10 amps in its range, uh, down to 100 milliamps for resolution. And I have one voltage meter which will go from zero to 99 volts again with a hundred millivolt resolution um, and also I put together a uh, quick program to demonstrate how you can use an Arduino Uno and uh, increase the resolution to 12 bits from the 10 by using uh, oversampling and decimation techniques and also um, put the results up on to an LC dis display so it's just increasing the uh, options that you can use to display the output of your power supply. Now, the Arduino Uno is not controlling the power supply at this point. It's simply being used as a display. And if you consider the fact that you can pick up a uh, four line by 20 character display for a few bucks on eBay and, you know, a, a, a clone Arduino Uno or building yourself one on a piece of variable just using the chips only costs a matter of a few dollars it becomes a very very economical way of putting together a display for the power supply and what you'll see is um, it actually is quite accurate now obviously when you you know because of the nature of what it is uh, I don't have a stable voltage reference connected to it right now it's just using the 5 volt display so on the current range because we're um, sensing across a hundred milliohm sense resistor the resolution is a little bit um, temperamental at the bottom end uh, because the Arduino Uno because it's using the power supply for its reference voltage at the moment it's drifting around a little bit and therefore um, you know it's not a stable reading at the low end but what you'll see for the voltage measurements it is actually very very stable now what I will do and I haven't got it set up for this video but I will do it um, a little bit later for the power supply project is hook up one with uh, a proper uh, voltage reference and even use some external ADCs and things for the job. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to show you all of these display options and introduce to you the additional uh, dynamic of using the Arduino Uno. So let's get you uh, having a look at what the displays are. Okay, so what I have here is um, basically two independent sets of measurements. I've just used my breadboard um, that I've been using for other parts of the project. So I have two displays here. The top one is using a um, current sense resistor that's over in the back here. Uh, you can just see it right here. Uh, it's a Vichy, um, actually I've got one down here at the front I can show you a little clearer. It's a Vichy current sense resistor for terminal. Right. So what I have is a 100 milliohm uh, current sense resistor, four terminal Kelvin connections. You put the current across the outside and you measure across the inside two terminals. What I'm also using here is a Vichy precision divider network. Now, um, this is not exactly the right one for the job, but it still gives us uh, a divider that's within easily within 1%. It's actually a 100K and a 1K resistor that is actually tuned to each other to within 0.01 percent accuracy. Now what I really want for a 10 to 1, sorry a 100 to 1 divider is actually 99k and 1k to get it precise. Um, the ones I have from Vichy though if you were using them in a positive feedback uh, op amp as a divider network for, um, for providing gain and things they would be perfect for that and that's what I originally got them for. Um, but in the case of dividing the voltage down from uh, say 5 volts to five mil uh, 50 millivolts or 500 millivolts for the sake of one of these panel meters um, it's still accurate enough because as you can see you know 100k instead of 99k that's only 1% uh, difference so for the sake of the demo uh, I'm just going to go with that 
So going through the board here, what we have on the left are the two displays that I showed you in a previous video which we were using for the um, initial displays for the power supply project. These are three and a half digit um, panel meters from um, element 14 and they are um, pretty accurate but they cost about uh, you know sort of forty to sixty dollars each so they're a little more expensive but you are getting um, some pretty accurate panel meters here and they're also not to 200 millivolt range and they work off of a 5 volt supply they also have the benefit of a differential input so when you're connecting to things like Kelvin scent resistors they will happily compensate for the um, difference of the wiring and things like that by using the differential inputs. Um, so the top one is measuring current which is currently showing 700 milliamps. The bottom one is measuring a voltage which is showing just under 2 volts. Uh, we'll get to how I'm controlling that in a moment. Um, on the uh, upper two displays here, these are the two displays that come from IC Station that they sent me to have a look at. And uh, as you can see, the left one is showing the volts again, it's sitting at 2 volts, and the right one is showing the current. Now, these are only three digits, so of course you can only get down to 10 milliamps or 100 millivolts. The, uh, but that's, you know, for most applications, and considering that these things are uh, you know, in the order of about five dollars each or something like that. I'll check on the uh, link and provide it uh, in the blog entries, but they're, uh, you know, significantly cheaper than these LCD displays that um, we've used before. Sorry about the beeping there, my multimeters were timing out. So, as you can see, they're uh, reading pretty um, accurately in, in alignment with the two more expensive panel meters here. Now the third display we have down here is the LCD display. Excuse the fact that the volt is flickering on and off. It's just the way that I'm refreshing it right now, I think. Um, the voltage line is measuring the volts. I've, I've got the input for the um, Arduino set to 1 to 5 volts, sorry, 0 to 5 volt range. Uh, using a 5 volt reference, which is just the internal one. So it's a little bit unstable, which is why the last couple of digits are flicking around a little bit. But nevertheless, it can, you know, as you can see, it's demonstrating the fact that it can actually do quite a good um, resolution here. Now I'm using oversampling and decimation to increase the resolution of the uh, A to D converter from about 4.8 millivolts per count to a uh, little over 1 millivolt per count. And the way that happens is you take 16 samples uh, in quick succession and then you right shift. You don't average them on the number of samples, but you right shift them by two counts. And I, I will link in um, a paper from Atmel that talks about how to do decimation and oversampling to increase the resolution of your rated D converters. Um, but anyway, as you can see here, the, uh, the voltage one is fairly accurate. Now, because it's very, very close to 6.0, it's actually flickering on the last digit a few counts, which is making the second digit flip around a little bit. The current one is um, doing about the same kind of flicking around, but of course it's got a lower voltage range overall for its um, current. Even at 2 amps, um, it would only be getting supplied with 200 millivolts to the um, meter, so it's working at the bottom end of its range. And really the only way to get around that is to put a small amplifier um, before the A to D converter of the Arduino or to um, change the voltage reference to say 1.1 volt. But that would also require me to rescale the sense resistors and things such that I don't um, overload the input to the A to D converter. Now that would, could be again one of the uh, Vichy precision resistor dividers or just made out of um, regular resistors if you buy some precision ones and you just set the appropriate divider network with it. So how does this relate to an actual um, quality digital panel meter? Well if you remember here we've got 2.0 volts 700 milliamps so 0.70 something 
um, the two higher resolution meters are reading almost 700 exactly and one digit off of uh, two volts and as you can see here um, I've got you know I'm supposed to be two volts so I'm basically within a couple of percent uh, right now actually better than a couple of percent probably better than one percent on the voltage range and the current range is reading a little bit low but nevertheless it's still within the right ballpark um, you know, and considering, as I said, we don't have a stable voltage reference on here, it's just the power supply 5 volts, uh, that's not too bad at all. So if we go and have a quick look at the meters now to see what they're showing us, you can see that the 2 volt range, you know, I've got 2.0, uh, 1.96, 1.99, and here I've got 2.01. So they're all fairly accurate, you know, for a, for a bench power supply for most projects, any one of these is more than adequate so you have a choice between spending you know sort of ten fifteen dollars on a lesser number of digits but within this count um, I found that these panel meters from IC station to be absolutely spot on um, which actually surprised me I expected them to be a little bit less accurate but they actually turned out to be very very good uh, the voltage for the HD converter on the Arduino Uno again I expected it to be a little worse than it is and I know that we can make it better and we will in later episodes by adding a um, external A to D converter and actually a precision voltage reference to uh, drive the internal and the external A to Ds and we can do a comparison of that in a later video. But right now uh, what I want to do is uh, try a few different ranges and settings on here so that you can see what happens when we uh, go up and down. Now I've got a potentiometer controlling the voltage input to all of these meters um, which I can just tweak quite easily to give us the required range and I'm using my uh, Keithley power supply to provide a constant current into the circuit for the current measurements and my uh, Agilent uh, U1272A is being used to directly measure the current with its uh, amp input on the panel so it makes for a good reference to compare all the other meters to so what I'm going to do right now is I've got 700 milliamps flowing through so I'm going to bring this down to say 250 milliamps and see how everything stacks up at the lower end so I'm just bring it down 2543 200 milliamps and let's take that up to 250 so my Keithley power supply is now showing me uh, 250 milliamps exactly coming out of it and if we uh, just have a quick scan around here you can see my current is actually reading about 244 to 250 in a little bit it's just flickering around on those last couple of digits but as I say on the current range understandable because we're working down in the noise layer of the ADD converter um, the voltage of course is still sitting at 1.9 uh, 1.96 ish um, the panel meter that is the three and a half digit one is reading exactly 250 milliamps and of course the uh, IC station digital panel meter is reading exactly 250 milliamps as well so that's pretty good let's take it down a little bit more perhaps down to uh, 100 milliamps and just see if the uh, low end there stays true so that's 100 milliamps my uh, Agilent digital multimeter is reading uh, 0.1003 um, the three and a half digit panel meter is reading 0.1 exactly my IC station digital panel meter is reading exactly 0 0.10 um, my current meter on the uh, Arduino Uno though is pretty much given up it's at 100 millivolts um, it could be that the uh, the way that the differential input is working it could be getting uh, noise that's actually making the reading go negative and therefore by the time it's displayed it basically just goes to zero so we've had a slight limitation on the current measurement for the Arduino Uno um, and again not surprising you know we're using the absolute bare minimum for the Arduino Uno but using the built-in A to D converter etc so let's um, crank this thing back up now a little bit let's go to um, let's say 500 milliamps so half an amp all right so I've got exactly 500 milliamps dialed in on the Keithley power supply and again we've got exactly 500 milliamps well 0 0.50 as best as it can measure on the IC station uh, panel meter which is excellent 
we've got um, 0 0.48, 0 0.5, it's flicking around a bit, a bit as it's already discussed, but that's reading uh, reasonably accurate for uh, what we could expect there. And the uh, higher resolution panel meter as well is reading exactly half an amp too. And my Agilent meter is reading 0 0.4998. So all of these different meters are reading very, very accurate to um, certainly well within their expectations. Um, so the next thing, let's see if I can crank this up to an amp um, and see at that end. I don't want to go too high with this. I can't go too high anyway because my power supply won't give me out too much, but I'm going to start overheating things if I'm not careful. Um, so okay, we've got exactly one amp. My Agilent is reading uh, 0.9992. Um, I've got exactly one amp reading on my uh, three and a half digit panel meter. I've got, um, it's flickering between 0.99 and 1 on the IC station current meter. And I'm reading, well, pretty accurate now because I'm starting to get out of the weeds with the um, Arduino Uno uh, current monitoring, which is, as I said, it's going across a 100 milliohm current sense resistor. So that's now flickering to uh, 1 amp quite accurately there, which is nice to actually see. So, um, Things are behaving quite nicely. I'm just going to check the, make sure my uh, current shunt, it shouldn't be getting hot because it's only basically uh, one amp at 100 millivolts, which means it's only 100 milliwatts that's being dissipated. So that's not bad at all. There's not even uh, any r remote need for a heat sink on that thing. So, okay, I'm going to crank up the power supply now as high as it will go. So I've just cranked it up to two amps now. Uh, my... Uh, Okay, I've hit the limit of one of my uh, the three and a half digit panel meters because they're actually only rated to 200 millivolts or actually 199.9 to be more precise. So if I back off my power supply to 1.90 just so that they all have a chance to uh, display near the top of their range. Um, my Agilent now is reading 1.898 so it's um, still within sort of like 0.1% accuracy of what the Keith Lee is giving out. Um, I'm reading exactly 1.9 amps on the three and a half digit display. I'm reading 1.89 which is still very accurate on the IC station display and my Arduino Uno is reading 1.87, 1.88. Um, flickering around a bit there but it's still reading uh, pretty accurate for that as well. So. Um, Let's see if I can go up a little bit more. I know we're going to lose the uh, panel meter for this one, like the three and a half digit, but I want to go up as high as I can. Um, so let's just increase this to three amps now. So my resistor now is probably going to start getting a little bit warm, but nothing that it can't handle because it's uh, only 300 milliwatts. So now we can see that um, I'm reading 2.9973 on the Agilent. Um, my uh, three and a half digit meter has gone over range. My Arduino Uno is quite happily measuring that and it's starting to now stabilize a little bit. So 2.95 um, as opposed to three, but it's still you know, within uh, 1%. And I haven't tuned this or anything like that with the software calibration. I've just done the basic um, 4096 into 5 and then just multiply whatever count I get. The 4096 being the 12-bit equivalent resolution that I now have because it's oversampling and then um, shifting left by, sorry, shifting right by 2 to do effectively a divide by 4 which gives me those extra two digits of resolution. So as you can see there, that's all of them again working very, very well. I'm going to take it up a little bit more. I can't remember my limits now for this. Uh, 5 amps is the maximum I can go, so I've just taken it up to 5 amps. Just lost my current for some reason, so I just need to investigate that. I'll be right back. Well, I've discovered what it is, and I'm actually not very impressed, to be honest. It has nothing to do with the panel meters, but I've just destroyed um, my Agilent um, current clip that came with my meter. I'm just looking at the... Um, Ratings. It's actually rated at 300 volts and 3 amps, so CAT2 rating. And what's happened here is that, um, I mean, I only had 5 amps going through here rather than 3. 
and it's basically instantly heating up and melting through the plastic of the um, sleeving which means even at 3 amp amps this thing I just did a quick check is getting very hot even with 3 amps which is not very uh, encouraging when this thing is supposed to be rated um, at 3 amps at 300 volts so you know I w if I was using this for uh, if I had this hooked up to uh, mains for instance and I had sort of like two and a half three amps going through it um, I don't feel very comfortable on the fact that this thing would be able to take that kind of load for any extended period of time because this thing just melted in a puff of smoke and uh, basically it's a write-off now so not impressed at all anyway that's the result of it I don't know if you can see with there but uh, yeah it's just melted right through the end and it's destroyed so I'll have to find another connector okay back up and running um, basically a pair of probes destroyed from uh, my Agilent meter as I said not impressed I'll be following up with them about that I know I overloaded them by only a I don't know 60% overload but I, you know even at uh, 3 amps rather than the uh, 5 um, I wouldn't have expected them to uh, melt and basically go up in a puff of smoke. Just get rather warm, that would be all. Anyway, um, back to this. So right now we've got um, 4.9 volts showing up on our um, Arduino Uno. 4.99 showing up on the IC station panel meter. Um, overload there and we have 4.996 showing up on the Agilent multimeter which is excellent so everybody's um, basically in accord with their measurements um, as I say with the exception of the um, Arduino Uno which is reading just a little bit low um, but as I say that's still 4.9 so out of 5 it's still within 2% accuracy and for most things if you measure in current that's still probably going to be good enough but you know nothing that a uh, better voltage reference and um, wiring and things wouldn't fix and with a bit of calibration as well so in the meantime let's go and check the voltages okay to quieten things down a bit I've turned off the uh, Keithley power supply the fans were going a little bit crazy there so as you can see now um, back to zero amps on the current because I've turned off the current source uh, my voltage is right now reading 1.95. I've got 2.01 on my Agilent, and I've got 2 and 2 on my other two displays. So they're all in quite reasonable alignment with each other. Now, if I just start tweaking this, let's just take it all the way up to 5 volts for the moment. So I'll use my Agilent as being the uh, baseline accurate measurement because I know that it is very accurate. I'm only using a single turn pot, so it's a little difficult to get exactly right. But right now, the uh, Agilent is reading 4.99 uh, volts, close enough. So we have 4.94 on the panel meter, uh, and I'll give you a reason for that in a moment. We've got 4.891 on the um, Arduino Uno, and we have exactly 5.0 on the IC station panel meter, which again is uh, spot on. Um, the reason that the panel meter here is reading a little bit low. If you remember at the beginning of the video I said that the divided network is not actually a hundred to one. It's actually slightly higher than that because it's a hundred K and a one K not a 99 K and a one K. So the result of that is that this one uh, will read about a one percent low value and as you can see here 4.94 rather than 4.98 which is what I have on the Agilent multimeter is pretty much the one percent error that I would expect to see. Um, the voltage on the power supply, well, as I say, that's uh, reading a little bit low, but, sorry, on the Arduino Uno is reading a little bit low, but it could be that the uh, power supply, oh, actually, I'm looking at it right now. Let me just connect in a uh, better power adapter and see if that comes up a little bit. Nope, didn't make any difference. So yeah, 4.9 as opposed, so it's about 2% out. Um, again, as I said, it's just using the built-in ADD converter. Um, so, you know, I'm not really worried too much about how accurate that is or isn't. 
uh, it's still for uh, the price of it is a very good and simple way of doing uh, uh, voltage measurement for something like this. So I'm taking it down to uh, 3 volts. Let's see what we get with 3 volts. Just trying to get it. There we go. 3.000 on the Agilent. 3.002 on the um, Arduino Uno. 3.0 and 2.97. So again, we expect the three and a half digit panel meter to be slightly on the low side because of the divider network not being quite the right kind for what I need, but it's still within the 1%. And if you think of adding the um, 2 onto the 7, then it will be 2.99, which is pretty much close enough. Um, I think the one thing that you can notice here with the uh, Uno is that the ADD converter is probably not linear, or not as linear as it could be. Uh, as I said, calibration and things might be able to iron that out uh, and a better voltage reference. But in this mid-range point, it's reading pretty accurate because that's basically 3.002 and we've got 3.001 on the Agilent. So that's pretty uh, impressive. So let's crank it down to 1 volt or let's just go 2 volts. Might as well go each one. All right, 2.202, and the uh, display here, 2.18, but again, adjusted, that looks pretty good. 2.2 uh, exactly on the IC station panel meter, and 2.202 on the um, Arduino Uno, so that's uh, quite impressive. Let's go down a little bit further. We'll go down to 1 volt this time, or 1.1 volts, something like that. See where we end up. All right, 1.026. So we have 1.02 on the um, Arduino Uno, plus or minus a little bit, 1.02 on the 3.5 digit, and 1.0 on the IC station. Of course, there isn't the resolution in it to get the extra digit that we're using here. So that's uh, pretty good. Um, happy with that. Now we just go down one more. We'll go down to uh, half a volt. Just adjusting that in. Okay, 501 is what we have now. So we have 0.5 exactly here. We have 0.5 exactly here. We have 0.49 and uh, flicking around in the last digit there. So that again is uh, quite accurate. So um, I think that pretty much shows it that really the difference in these panel meters, as I said, You've got a few dollars for the Arduino Uno with a um, 20 by 4 line display, which means you could do a lot of other things with this as well. Um, the Arduino Uno has uh, quite a few inputs for analog uh, reading, and if you put a little uh, low cost, um, you know, 16 bit or 14 bit, even 12 bit A to D converter uh, external, you could have quite a lot of um, readings being taken by an UNO and fed up to a display and even fed to a PC very, very easily. So this could be monitoring uh, a couple of channels uh, on your power supply or measuring the, you know, the reference voltage, the um, t you know, temperature and uh, the uh, volts and amps uh, going out to the uh, load. And even if you had a uh, DC load as well, it could be also monitoring that at the same time. Um, at the low end of the you know the price range is your three-digit um, panel meters from IC station, and as we've seen from those, uh, their accuracy is pretty much spot on, which considering the price um, is quite remarkable. So uh, you know if you really you know if you if you're strapped for a budget or you just need to have your basic three-digit um, resolution, then these are a great choice. Going up market to get the extra digit. Um, then you have the choice of using the um, three and a half digit panel meters that you can get from Newark and Element 14. And uh, if you want to do a bit of programming and have the flexibility, of course, you've got your Arduino Uno. And beyond that, really, um, you're starting to get to expensive panel meters. And in the next video, I will, um, or one of my future videos, should I say, I will be introducing some uh, industrial panel meters that are designed for control and things. 
and um, one of the ones I have here that I'm going to show you is a panel pilot ACE um, that was sent to me for evaluation. Um, along with that, in the next video regarding uh, measuring voltages and things for the power supply and pretty much anything else you want to do, um, I will show using um, at least a 16-bit A to D converter. I do have a couple of 24-bit um, SAR A to D converters as well. The SAR meaning successive approximation. Um, and if I can get the software up and running for those, we'll also have a look at those. Because even though you've got something like 24 bits of resolution, which is like really, really accurate, it doesn't mean that you have 24 bits of accuracy. And we'll have a little discussion as to um, what that means when, we, when the time comes for that video. But I think in the meantime, I'm going to wrap this one up. I didn't want to make it too long, so I'm going to quit now. We've had a look at the different panel meters. Uh, we've got an idea now for you know what you can... Um, by um, at the low end, the medium end, and on the higher end, and how well they work. And as you can see, they're all down to how stable is the voltage reference and everything else. And the ones that are uh, come ready-made, um, uh, there's no issues with either of those whatsoever. They've just been absolutely spot on. Um, the, other, the only other thing I want to mention for these panel meters, which requires me to zoom in a little bit, is if you look at these ones, right? These are the uh, two from Element 14, the Newark. Uh, Funnel website. All right, they're quite nice, but they're not LED backlit. You can, sorry, they're not backlit. You can get these with backlights as well, which will make them more readable in um, dimmer lights. Like if I take away the lighting from here, all right, you can see how quickly they fade down a little bit. I mean, they're still readable by the human eye, but my camera is certainly having a little harder time picking up on that. But they're very much dependent on reflective light from a light source. The LED ones, on the other hand. Um, they are very, very readable. Right now you can see actually the uh, power one, uh, sorry, the current one uh, flickering a little bit, probably just because of the scan uh, matching somewhere close to the video camera. Um, but the other thing about these as well is that from a physical mounting perspective, these two are um, very small and they actually just go through a, a rectangular hole on the, uh, power on the front panel of your power supply and then you use a small metal bracket to push up from the back and these little tines grip a hold of the panel meter and will secure it into the case, uh, sorry, on the panel, whatever you're putting it onto. Um, these ones from um, IC Station, what these do, they have the basic same mechanics in that you just have a rectangular hole um, cut out for them. Um, let me just move across to them so you can see while we're talking here. All right, but what they're, they're slightly bigger hole because they're a bigger display, but again, they, these have the uh, grips built right into the uh, display unit here. So you just cut the rectangle out into your uh, plexiglass or aluminum panel or whatever it might be, and then you just have to push this in. And all the wiring and everything else, there's really, for the current meter, there's four wires on the back of this thing. You've got two for the voltage, which I've just got hooked up to five volts, and then you've got two thicker wires for the current. On the uh, voltmeter, you've just got three wires, two for the 5-volt supply and one for the voltage. And that actually brings me to one thing I do want to point out with these, is that they're not differential input and that the ground line for the 5 volts is also tied to the low side of your voltage measurement. That's why there's only three wires on the uh, voltmeter because you know it, it uses the 0-volt line as a common reference. So there is no... Um, differential input that can that can compensate for uh, any voltage drop on wiring right depending on where you connect this in your circuit for the current meter though the one thing I did notice which took me a little bit of figuring out how to wire all this up without um, skewing the, the current readings is that the um, thick negative side of the current reading is actually connected to the zero volts of the power supply as well. So even though the current shunt is there as a separate piece, it's actually not using a differential input or anything like that. So when you're wiring this thing up, you do need to be aware of that. Uh, if you're using a single five volt supply that's common to your power supply, you just need to make sure you connect them up in the right place. So the, in this case, it would be a low side current sense um, going to the zero volt rail. Um, your power supply, again, will be uh, zero volt referenced. 
and your um, you know, your 5 volt rail would come from a separate supply and you would just tap the uh, thin wire for the voltage measurement straight to your output terminal of your power supply and you'd be pretty much done. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much it. Oh yeah, the um, Arduino Uno connections of course, like I mentioned, I'm using them as differential but the Arduino Uno, don't get me wrong, it does not have a differential input on the Arduino Uno. Um, the way that I've got this hooked up, the um, current sense resistor here, which is the Vichy um, current sense here, has got four terminals and I've got two analog inputs of the Arduino Uno hooked into um, the high and the low side of the uh, Vichy current sense resistor. That way what the software is doing is it's taking a high side reading, so say it reads uh, 100 and uh, say 6 millivolts on the high side and then it's also taken a reading on a separate analog input on the low side, so say that one gets 6 millivolts and it's actually subtracting that one from the high side reading so that you can actually have um, effectively a software differential input and I'm doing the same for the voltage as well. I've got the um, high side voltage going to the point that I want to measure and then I'm taking the low side voltage to uh, the equivalent um, ground point. So if this was a power supply output, the high side would go to the positive terminal, the low side would go to the negative terminal, and any current shunt resistors and wiring effects that would normally uh, affect a single-ended measurement would be eliminated because I'm doing the software differential input on the uh, Arduino Uno. And that still only takes four of the analog inputs, and you actually have uh, six on the Uno, but again, I'm using <laughs> the, the last two for the uh, two-wire serial interface to the LCD display. So you've really just got the four. And if you want to go to more than that, then you just have to put an external I2C or SPI-based um, A to D converter on there, and you're all set. And you can basically extend that um, as far as you want within the range of the addressing capabilities of the external chips. Anyway, I'm done now. I said that before, and this time I really mean it. So let's just pack this up and uh, we'll get the video out so that you guys can enjoy it and hopefully learn something from it. I'll put the software up on my uh, website and on the um, Element 14 blog as well for uh, you to download and use as you like. It's nothing special, uh, no warranties, but uh, you're welcome to it. All right, hope this helps. Bye.